guys it's joseph here and welcome to to the lesson and in this lesson we'll be looking at uh, the cell theory we'll be looking at the cell theory okay so let's begin by definition and, and uh, uh, make sure that uh, you've taken out your notebook uh, find somewhere where you'll be taking some notes because i'll be answering most of the commonly asked exam and test questions on this topic so make sure that you're taking note of most of the things that I'll be saying in this video. Okay, so let's define the, the term cell theory. So cell theory, cell theory is defined as the collection of principles that help us to understand the fundamental properties of a cell. Okay, so that is how it is defined. And uh, this question once came in the past papers. In the way biology is, they just repeat questions. So if it came once, it might come again. Okay, so now generally, cell theory um, is just where we study about how the concept of, of, of a cell came into existence. Without, uh, with, without whatever was involved, without whoever was involved, by now we wouldn't have been learning about a cell. So there are some people who were involved, there were some scientists who were involved into the discovery of a cell. And it, it wasn't discovered by an, an, an individual, it was discovered by different scientists in over a period of time. Okay, so we look at the people who were involved so that this concept of a cell can be into existence, so that we can be learning about it right now without these individuals contributing uh, we wouldn't have been learning about a cell. Okay, so uh, they like asking sometimes about this history. That's why I will, that's why they they teach about this history because they bring some questions on the history. And the most common questions that they like asking is about uh, the individuals who are involved. But oftenly they are just interested in two, three individuals who are involved. Okay, but I'm going to talk about I think four. But they are only interested. I mean, I'll talk about like five. But uh, they are only interested in two, three. And I'll mention the three, or whom you should uh, mention, because if you study most of the, uh, most of these big books like uh, Ravins, uh, you will like uh, find that many people are involved. Okay, but actually, the lectures are only interested in two, three people because they contributed uh, on uh, the principles, on the principles of the cell, which we are also going to talk about. Uh, the collection of principles of course okay so uh, let me begin with the history let me break it down for you okay so it all started in uh, it started in 1635 so it all started in 1635 so in 1635 uh, there was uh, a, a man by the, the name of Robert Took so Robert Took was a polymath so you need to know how to how to write the same robot hook because you'll be required to write it. And when they ask you to mention the names, you should make sure that you include uh, Robert Hook. So Robert Hook is written like this. Okay, so Robert Hook is uh, basically just uh, a polymath. Uh, what do I mean by a polymath? A polymath is a person who has studied different subjects broadly instead of focusing on one. So like for the, this man, Robert Hooke, uh, he studied physics, astronomy, geology, meteorology, and architecture. Okay, so uh, this guy, uh, he discovered a cell using a micro, a micro, a, a microscope. The microscope that he used was innovated by a guy called Anton Van. But don't mention Anton Van when tell you to mention the people who contributed to the to, uh, to the foundation of the principles of a cell. No, he, he didn't. He didn't contribute anything. But it is just that his microscope microscope that he innovated was used by Robert Hooke to discover a cell. So Anton Van is written like this. And the most interesting thing is that this guy Anton Van, he wasn't even a scientist. He didn't have any uh, university education or any scientific knowledge. He was just uh, uh, an innovative guy who, who made a microscope. Okay, so this Robert Hooke, he was uh, trying to uh, to observe a certain hood. There is a hood that is called a cork. A cork, 
a cork is just a hood that is used to for construction uh, you can search it out you see how it looks like so he observed it under a microscope and he observed some structures which he named a cell he named them a cell because it reminded him of some uh, rooms of people were called monks where they used to live in so looking at the structure of a cell that he observed under a microscope they reminded of they reminded him of these small rooms where monks lives so and the rooms were called cells so he decided to call the structure that that he observed on the microscope he decided to name it a cell so uh this guy just discovered that there exists a cell okay uh he didn't know much about the cell the structures or uh, whether they they exist in uh, in animals in plants he didn't know anything about that he only knew that uh, there exists something that I called a cell. Okay? So now, scientists got curious. And by the way, let me show you how robot hooks used to look like. So this is how a uh, robot hook used to look like. Okay? So, robot hook uh, was the guy who just discovered that a cell exists. Some scientists got curious uh, upon hearing this discovery. Uh, now, after some years, after some years in 1838, in 1838, uh, there came another scientist by the name of Matthias Jacob Sladen. Uh, let me just uh, first let me show you how uh, how it used to look like. So, ladies and gentlemen, this was Matthias. Uh, I mean, Ma Matthias Jacob Schleiden. Okay, L uh, let me show you how it is written. Okay, so this is how uh, uh, you should write his name. You would be required to write this this one when they tell you to uh, write the names of the scientists who are involved. You, you should write this one. So far, you should write uh, Robert Hooke, uh, Matthias Jacob Schleiden. This is how you pronounce the name, uh, but don't worry, you won't be required to pronounce it, just for educational purposes. Uh, and I know that it might be weird, because it's not, you might not expect these names to be pronounced as this, because uh, these guys were Germans. These guys were Germans, and these names are pronounced in a, in a German manner. Yeah, so, uh, trying to pronounce them in an English way, you might get them wrong. Okay, so... Uh, so this guy, uh, this guy Matthias Jacob Schleiden, uh, he was just uh, a botanist. A botanist is somebody, uh, if you learned about the branches of biology, which are not really going to teach because they don't ask them on the test and exams. Yeah, but some lecturers will teach you, but uh, they don't bring questions on that, on that topic. I mean, on that concept. Let me call it a subtopic. Yeah, so this guy was a botanist. A botanist is somebody who studies plants, somebody who has uh, broadly studied plants. So th this guy, uh, after hearing about a cell, that the, there exists a cell, a cell has been discovered, he, he got interested and started figuring out if this cell was really present in all the plants. Okay, so now according to his study now, he discovered that uh, even plants also have cells. They are made up of cells. All the plants are made up of cells. And uh, due to that discovery, he concluded that a cell is a basic unit of life. Because uh, plants bring about life. Uh, uh, plants contribute to, co contribute to many of the processes that occur in the environment. And some of the examples which plants are involved into uh, include uh, the rain cycle and uh, also the process of photosynthesis, which eventually uh, produces glucose and the oxygen that we breathe. And uh, as, as human beings, we cannot survive without these things. So, uh, due to the presence of cells into plants, plants which are involved in to these processes, which help us to exist as human beings, to survive as human beings, uh, he concluded that the, uh, the the cells are the basic unit of life. Okay, after figuring out that the cells are also found in plants. So uh, now, uh, after that was discovered, another scientist got 
interested he got skeptical and uh took it personal and studied further the scientist by the name of Theodor Schwann. Uh, first of all, let me show you what this guy used to look like, Theodor Schwann. Okay, so this was uh, what Theodor Schwann used to look like. This was Theodor Schwann. So Theodor Schwann, uh, just in a minute, I'll show you how to write his name. And also when they tell you to write the scientist who are involved, make sure that you include his name. Theodore Schwann. So Theodore Schwann was just um, Theodore Schwann was also a scientist, but him he was a zoologist. A zoologist by definition is somebody who has studied about animals broadly. Okay, that's a zoologist. So what this guy did was that. Um, he, he discovered that cells also e exist in animals, okay? So now, after figuring out that even animals are made up of cells, and uh, already, since Mathis had already discovered that cells also exist in two plants, so this also concluded that all the living organisms, all the organisms involved, I mean, include animals and plants, okay? So at first, it was only known that uh, cells are only found in two plants. So now, after this discovery, it concluded that now all the organisms, that includes all the animals, and the animals, that also includes us. So, that includes all the living organisms, all the biological organisms, are made up of cells. Okay? So, it was all because of this guy that it was discovered that even animals are made up of cells. So, uh, which is also part of the, the the principles of the cell theory. Okay, so let me just show you how to write his name. And uh, actually, that was in 1839 when he discovered that. Uh, let me show you how to write his name. Okay, so that was in uh, 1839. And this is how you write his name. You'll be required to write his name. So, these are the three scientists whom we should write. The first one is Robert Hooke, the second one is Mathis Jacob Sladen, and the third one is uh, Theodore Schwann. So, these were the scientists who were involved in the, in the discovery of uh, the cell theory. Again, now, lastly, let me talk about another scientist. Uh, I know some lectures on tissue, but uh, he also contributed to the discovery of the cell principle. Yeah, uh, uh, let me just uh, mention him, and uh, I'll also tell you what he discovered. Yeah, but uh, make sure that you just stick to these three. At, at your level, they just stick to these three. But for learning purposes, uh, let me also mention the last one, who discovered uh, one of the cell principles. Uh, I know most of the lecturers won't teach you this, but uh, just for learning purposes, uh, let me mention him. So, uh, this scientist, uh, his name was Rudolf Vecchio. Uh, okay, so this is Rudolf Vecchio. I mean, not Vecchio, but Vecchio. Uh, yeah, so Rudolf Vecchio, uh, he, 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 was, uh, he was also a scientist. He, he discovered that uh, cells are replicated from already existing cells. Uh, it's among the the principles of the cell theory. I just wanted you to, you to know the scientist who discovered the last one. Okay, but the lectures don't teach about this one. But he was also involved in the discovery of uh, the cell. Okay, so this guy was the one who discovered that uh, the cells uh, come from the already existing cells. Uh, and then uh, some scientists also further discovered about uh, how it happens. Uh, they got curious about knowing how the replication happened, and that's why the concept of cell division came in. Cell division was discovered by uh, other scientists. Even the chromosomes, all those stuff were discovered by other scientists over the years. Okay, but you don't need to know about those. You just need to know. Uh, okay, so now, so far, you need to, to, to just... Uh, most of these three scientists, the top three, they are the ones you should all you should mention. The first one is Robert Hooke, the second one is uh, Mathis Jacob Schleiden, 
and the fourth one is Theodor Schwann. Okay, when they tell you to mention the scientists who were involved, make sure that you mention these three. Okay, these are the only ones whom the lecturers are interested into. But for learning purposes, and you don't need to know how they used to look like, I'm just choosing those pictures for uh, for learning purposes because maybe it might be easy for you for you to to remember the history uh, and to remember the names so that uh, maybe you can just easily recall. That's why I'm telling you all this theory. You don't need to master this theory. Uh, I'm just uh, telling you about it so that maybe it can be easy for you to remember the names, in, including the principles. The, the prostitutions, as they are called, which I'm going to talk about uh, right now. Okay, so just master these three, the, the names, and uh, how to write them, Don't, not how to pronounce them. Okay, so now, with that being said, let me now conclude uh, the, the the principles which they have discovered, which lectures will teach you, and which they always ask about it say that they ask about them on your test or on your final exam they really like asking about these okay so uh, these principles they are often called postulations uh, let me just uh, write down them for you okay so uh, these are the uh, the first one uh, this is one of the first I mean one of the postulations Postulations of uh, the cell theory. Of course, which was discovered by Matthias, uh, Matthias Jacob Schleiden, but you don't need to know that. Uh, the reason why I told you about that history is for you to, to easily, easily be able to recall the postulations. Okay, so this is the first one. And the second one is... So the second one is that all biological organisms are made up of cells. Okay, and uh, this even uh, brought the study of uh, the prokaryotic and eukaryotic organism. Uh, that concept it, it came up from the the same concept because some um, scientists got curious and started discovering which biological organisms existed, which I mean which biological ex organism exist. So after this discoveries, they figured out that there exist two types of biological organisms, and these are eukaryotic organism and prokaryotic organisms. Uh, don't worry. In the next video, I'll be talking about that. Uh, let's look at the last one. In the last one is that all cells come from the replication of already existing cells. Okay, so these are the three uh, principles of uh, cell, uh, of um, the the postulations of the cell theorem. Okay, so these are the ones that you should mention when you are asked to mention the. Sometimes they might ask you to the postulates or the postulations of the cell theory. Okay. So in the end, uh, in the next video now, I'll be looking at. Uh, I mean, we'll be looking at the the prokaryotic cells, pro prokaryotic organisms. Okay, so this is it for this video. I hope you have a very nice day.